welcome to Love Bites, a show where we debug romance. Now, I am not a doctor. I am not a psychiatrist. I am not a patient. I don't have a degree in sociology or psychology, but what I do have is wealth of experience and a sincere desire to help you. Because sometimes love can get messy. Sometimes, if you're not careful, love bites. <coughs> wow, guys, look at that. Uh, welcome to Love Bites with our guest, Unctious SC. Unctious, how are you doing today? I'm doing really well. I'm doing pretty, yeah, actually pretty good. It was a really nice day out, and I needed some sun, so feeling pretty all right, man. Good, good. Um, how are you? How are you? You sound great. You sound like I'm top of the having the world. time of my life. Yeah. I am not <laughs> deathly ill or anything. Um, you're getting to be basically a regular on the show. I think we've had you more than anyone else. We've had a couple people twice. You're the only person that's been here three times. So. I am honored. I am just so honored. Aww. <laughs> um, well, you know the drill. Tell me, what are your qualifications for all those viewers who haven't seen you before? I have an OkCupid okay account. Like, does that count for anything? Mm, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> That's about as far as it goes, man. Sweet. <laughs> Sweet. So, are you ready to solve some people's love advice? So ready. Super psyched. Let's do well, it. Well, the first question's a good one. Uh, dear Neil and Guest, a few shows ago, Hobgoblin stated that watching porn was bad, and Neil agreed with him. I was wondering if you could expand on this a little more in detail. I'm a heterosexual male in my late 20s, and I watch porn a lot. I mostly think of it as being pretty harmless, but obviously I don't know that society. Uh, but obviously I know that society in general looks down upon porn users. And your opinion made me wonder if I'm creating problems for myself by indulging. I've never been in a relationship, although I have never really tried. It would be nice to have a girlfriend, but I have a lot of problems that I would have to fix before I think I could be. It would be a real possibility. I enjoy porn a lot, and I find or feel that it helps me to release frustration that I would otherwise feel in my situation. However, I do sometimes wonder if not watching porn would improve me in some way, even if it's just to make me subconsciously come across as a little less creepy or something. What do you think? Experiences show me that I'm unlikely to use my extra free time for anything productive. Thanks for a great <laughs> show, Anon. Cool. <clears throat> well, how do you feel about this? Well, I feel like porn is perfectly healthy if you're like if it's not something that takes up all of your time and it's not getting in the way of your actual you know day-to-day -day life i think the, the the time that like porn can start to like screw with you is if you're like jerking it all the time and you're watching porn all the time your expectations about women and about what how you need to act towards women and also like your subconscious expectations like your biological expectations actually change like just what your instinct is to find it attractive can change over time just by watching porn for instance so um What's interesting about it, though, is that there's like not that many people. There's not that many males, anyway, that don't watch porn. I think there's like a there's like this this uh, what do you call it? Um, like some sort of study that they try to do about you know what are the actual effects of porn on a young adolescent male or like you know a, a male in his twenties. And the problem with it was that they couldn't find like a control group because they couldn't find a group of people that like didn't actually watch porn on a regular basis so it was very difficult <laughs> to actually do any sort of kind of study so you're certainly not alone what I would say is um, you'll see a lot of people doing uh, like the no fap challenge and stuff like that and that could provide actually a few different positive benefits um, one of which is that your expectations for what a woman is supposed to look like and what you're attracted to that will be more realistic just by really it, being involved with actual females as opposed to like the porn star archetype. Um, and I think that's where Neil might have been talking about, you know, the, the unhealthiness of it. Yeah, that's kind of, uh, it's the, when you get used to seeing the like porn star archetype only, you kind of, you, you, I've noticed this happening to me. Like when I, back in the day when I was single and watching way too much porn, I would go out and be like, oh, that person's, kind of cute i guess and or around sea girls and my first thoughts would instantly turn to like sex i mean that happens kind of with everyone but once you're past you know 16 17 18 those things start to like go down but then if your porn consumption goes up too high then you, you kind of get into this weird head state where you end up like seeing girls and like oh i want her to do that to me also the shit they do in porn can like how do I, how do i say this um you start to expect, or it, it can twist your mental state around about like what to expect when it comes to sex. Like, if in porn you're watching a lot of 
whatever. Like, you know, the girls are crazy flexible. They're doing all these cool things. The guys have these, like, 10-inch dicks. And you're like, yeah, oh, shit. But I only have, like, an average penis. And the girl <laughs> that I'm kind of be having sex with isn't that... Fl- oh, man, it's going to be... Like, it. You know, it's not very... It's kind of... It's one of those things that's hard to notice... But it does fuck with the way that you perceive things, and it does change your connotations of hot. Um, I recently read an article on Reddit somewhere about how uh, there was a study done, and it turns out that men and women both find people more attractive without makeup. And I don't, I don't remember if this was a point of the study, or like a, one of their findings, or just my own interpretation of it. But like makeup, including, well, let me make this point. It transcends. It it moves over into porn. Like when you put makeup on, you're kind of decking something out and making more artsy. It's not actually necessarily more attractive to someone. Like, you see a girl in makeup, oh yeah, she looks great. But if you're like, uh, do what I actually want to be, like, you, you, you think girls are generally more attractive when they don't have their makeup on, but the makeup is like an extra show. Like, it's the dressings on top of everything that make things look nice. But it's not the, like, actual attractiveness. Same thing kind of goes with porn in my, in my theory here, is that you look at porn, you're like, oh man, all that stuff is super hot, all that stuff is great. But it's just kind of, it's, you're looking at the done up artsy aspect of things. And I know it's weird to call porn artsy, but you are getting the like, the show side of it, where the girls are doing all these crazy, dirty things. And those of you that, you know, have had sex before, you'll, if you watch porn, you're like, actually, if she was doing that, that probably wouldn't necessarily be all that great. And if he was doing that, it actually wouldn't do anything for her. Like, clearly that. Unless she's just like wildly sensitive, what he's somehow doing it's right like there, sexier in idea than in practice. Exactly, like that's what I'm trying to say. Thank you. It's they they do things that are great for your imagination, and they really help you with that area. But they kind of they're they're not good learning tools. In fact, if you're watching a lot of porn and you haven't had sex, you're going to find that if you try and replicate what they do in porn, you're going to be terrible in bed. Like, don't yeah. don't ever try and learn from porn. Yeah, um, one thing that I'm oh go ahead. Keep no, going. no, no, please, please. Uh, I just wanted to re-echo what you kind of brought up for a second. Um, is the self-esteem issue with it? Like, it's really, really easy to like tr- formulate your own expectations about yourself, not only other people, but like how you should be acting and what you should look like, and that's all fucked up. Like, that's when it starts getting really, really. Like, that's where it can really, really get problematic when it starts reflecting on yourself as like, well, I'm just never adequate enough because I can't do all of these things. I can't last for you know this long. I don't have this long of a dick. Like, all of those things can can get in the way of your self confidence, and that's really, really, really problematic in a lot of different ways. So I think that's pro- that's a really, really important point yeah. that you brought up. Neil, um, that I was glad I that you said. point that I was about to say. Oh, the other thing is, if you regularly rely on porn, your, your natural imagination um, for what is hot and what is sexy and stuff will diminish, and that will, that can cause, you know, problems in your love life in some regards. Like, how should I put this? Um, God, I'm having a really hard. Sorry, I'm not feeling very well. I'm having a so hard you're time. Using, you're using this using crutch, words. and like, if your if your imagination and your thoughts are like a muscle, and you're just letting them like chill out for a while, then it's going to be way harder when you actually need to use your thoughts and your imagination as a muscle because now you're you're relying on this extra aid to get yourself. Yeah, uh, like yeah. if you if you can't, for lack of a better phrasing, beat your meat without <laughs> porn. Like if you can't just like wherever you are when you do this thing if you can't get off without like having that extra visual or that extra audio visual aid like maybe cut cut back a little bit cut, you know you should be able to the, the your brain is the biggest sex organ you have and you should be able to be turned on and to turn yourself on and to turn others on without the use of porn you know and that that sort of like creativity is really healthy for you and really good for you so when when Ryan and I, Hobgoblin and I, were saying that porn is unhealthy, it's like only in the quantity, in vast quantities. You know, if you're watching porn like twice a day, I'm not going to blanketly say that's bad for you, but like, you know, maybe it's, it's, watch it once a day and then the other time or the other two or three times that you hit, jerk off that day, like, use your mind. Um, don't don't rely on the porn. I know it helps you, but don't rely on it. It's, it, it's better for you in the long run to be able to like get off on your own also some like crazy biological shit that goes down like when you see like an attractive naked women uh, women an attractive naked woman if you're a male like that 
that has like drug like impact on your mind. So like some, I, I remember reading about a study where they took like these rats, right? They took one male rat and they put him in a bunch of in a room, a cage with all these female rats, and this motherfucker just went at it, just went at it until he went through like all of the female, all all of the the female rats, right? Finally, he he's done with all of them. He can like recognize that he's he has had sex with every last one of these females, and this thing is like panting. It's exhausted. He's chilling in his cage. They add one more female instantly, like adrenaline rush. He gets back into the zone and like goes after to like mate with that last female, which is absolutely wild. Like it has some serious implications about what it does to your mind, like chemically too, which is way way interesting. I don't know. Are you saying they showed thing. the ra- they showed the rat porn? No, no, then- no. They added one female, like a female uh-huh. that wasn't in the cage. Right. They added it into the cage, and that immediately like got him revved up again. Like, all right, we're gonna do this because there's another female there. Okay. So my point being that that the options of like. The option of having something that you haven't had yet, or the option of having another female, like, around that you can be attracted to, um, like, can have like a sort of adrenaline burst in your mind that is like a drug-like sensation. You're chemic, like, you are hardwired to want to have sex with as many, like, how do you? I don't know. As many other people as, as you many can. female as as many females as possible, right? So, like, if you're like spending all your time on porn, you're seeing all these different porn stars back to back to back to back to back, you start to exhaust what you might really be interested in. And you can become kind of like addicted to porn. Yeah, you can also find yourself in situations where your girlfriend's like up and randy and like ready to go and you're just like, "Mm, I don't know, I've been watching a bunch of porn and I know you're kind of trying to be sexy right now, but I was just watching these like amazingly hot girls do all these dirty things and like this little thing that you're doing right now isn't getting me there somewhere which so I yeah like the porn porn's over the top you should you go ahead and use it but you know do it in small quantities I think we have killed this question this we is a, have yeah. run this question into the ground so uh, yeah our end result is it's not bad for you but you know Jerking is healthy masturbation is a normal healthy practice that absolutely you should not but maybe feel ashamed from but don't you know try and cut back on the porn <laughs> some you know, it, it, unless everything, you're already everything cut back. in moderation. Literally everything in moderation, <laughs> except except heroin. Don't probably shouldn't do heroin. That's one of the. Oh, I thought you meant don't do it in moderation. <laughs> Just do lots of heroin. <laughs> do heroin. <laughs> All right. Excuse me. Next question, dear Neil and guest. If this goes on very long, I apologize. There is this new girl at work that I'm really starting to like a lot. For a little context, I'm 30 and she's 24. She's been working here for about two months now, and until recently, I hadn't really talked to her a lot, primarily because she works on the opposite side of the building and I rarely ever see her. Two weeks ago, we had an office party and we actually talked a lot. This is where I realized I really liked her, but I also found out she had a boyfriend. I felt we hit it off, but I don't know what to do. I learned uh, when talking to her that this is her longest boyfriend she's ever had. There was also a story about how she was with this guy who went overseas for a while and met this other guy. She hung out with him a few times and felt bad about it, even though nothing happened. I'm not sure what relevance that has, but I thought I'd add it. Since then, I've gone out of my way to talk to her sometime every day. Uh, That night, the party, and since I would catch her looking at me occasionally and would get a smile. She also works at a restaurant. A friend and I went in and ate there last weekend. She came over and talked to me several times and while we were there, I felt like it was a longer time than just an acquaintance of, hey, how are you type stuff. I'm not sure if 